Hi everyone and welcome to a new video about controls and topics and we continue with the analytical design of PID controllers and this is our second example. In this second example we will discuss the design of a PID controller and we will carry out the calculations step by step and we will verify our calculation using the simulations in MATLAB. So let's look at our calculations in second example first. So the PID control design using analytical methods. So what we have is the following system. We have the controller, we have the plant in cascade and we have the unity game feedback configuration. Now the plant is given by a second order system which has uh, two poles, two real poles and both are stable. And the controller is given by the PID controller expression is shown here KP, KI and KD and we have this expression in Laplace domain. So what are the design specifications? The following design specifications are given. We have an overshoot specification, which is 4.32%. We have the settling time uh, specification with a 2% criterion of less than one second. And we have the third one, which is zero steady state error for step input. If I look at the third specification, that results actually in the following. If I want a zero steady state error, I need an integral action. So it means I need an integrator in my controller. If I want a short settling time, which is here very, very short one second, depending of course on the application, but in this case, it's a very short one. And I need a very small overshoot that results actually that I need a derivative action. So I need the integral action for the steady state error. I also need derivative action for the overshoot and the speed, the settling time of our system. Now, also your system needs to have some power, so that will be given, provided by the gain, the proportional controller. So in total, I need a PID controller. I can already say that by looking at the specifications. So let's look at the solutions then. Now, for finding the required controller using analytical method, I need to have the design point. And for that, I need the real part and imaginary part of our design point. Now, let's start with the overshoot. Overshoot is given here. Now as a scalar instead of a, a percentage that the real leader uh, is required. From there, I can use the formula of the zeta, which will give me then the uh, value for the next one, which is the damping, uh, absolute damping ratio. So the zeta is related to the overshoot. And if I now substitute the value of the overshoot, which is shown here, you do the math here, you will get 0 0.707. That is the damping ratio. That's the first parameter. Now the second one is uh, we get from the setting time. Setting time is one second. I just set that at the edge. So it is not exactly one second, of course, according to the specification, but I made it exactly one. That means the absolute damping ratio, which is the sigma here, absolute damping, must be four over that uh, setting time will be four over one, which is four radians per second. Now the last one, is the omega d which will define the imaginary part of our design point will we be sigma times the cos sigma times the tangent of the cosine of the zeta which is the damping ratio so what i want is i need the zeta i will take the cosine of that one and that result i will also take the tangent of that one now since the cosine of 0.707 is uh, approximately one the tangent of one uh, tangent of this one is to in total one, so I will have a uh, four times uh, one, which is actually just one. So I will have a result uh, for omega d is also one. So it means the real part, which is given by the absolute damping sigma, and the imaginary part was given by the damped uh, frequency, which is omega d. So I have four and four for the real part and the imaginary part. Now, if I now collect those uh, values. I can now set up the closed loop, dominant closed loop poles as 1,2, which is sigma plus or minus j omega d. And that will be minus 4 plus j plus minus j4. Now, from this, first I will start with the P controller. And we, we will make it even more simple. We will say, okay, the P controller has a gain of just 1. And we will take a design point and you can take uh, one of the poles here. I will take S1. And we will carry out our calculations in the design equation using that uh, design point. So I will say S1, S1, and it's just a plus uh, with a plus uh, imaginary part. So I will have minus 4 plus J4, which is actually shown here. So that's actually our input for the design equations. Now, the design equations, we have discussed this in the 
previous example. For that, we need the uh, S1 as an expression for the magnitude and also the gain. I, I mean the phase. So there is an absolute value and there is also the phase. Now, the absolute value is just the length of this uh, vector. So that means actually the square root of the imaginary part and the real re imaginary part. I mean the real part and the imaginary part. That means the square root of the 32. Now, the beta, which is the angle, is 180 degrees plus the arctangent of the imaginary part divided by the real part, and that results in 135 degrees. Why we do 180 degrees in, uh, plus uh, to this expression is because if you draw this in the complex plane, you will have your real part in the in the in the negative part and the imaginary part will be of course in the positive uh, direction and if you draw an arrow from the origin to the uh, to, to, to this location you will see that the phase shift is not just this value but it's also 180 degrees plus this value so you need to add that so it's the best way to draw this i have done this in a separate videos about complex numbers and phases so i will uh, also add the link in the description of this video to have some uh, background information now if i now collect those two values and put it here in this expression i have the s1 given as follows so square root of 32 with e to the power j 135 degrees now, the next step is uh, looking at the loop transfer function. The loop transfer function is given by this expression with the magnitude in its phase. The loop transfer function itself is the controller in cascade with the plan. So the controller here and the plan with the unity gain feedback. So you make the full circle and you have this expression. Now, we see that the expression for the controller must be one. That is actually the first step. And the plan is what we had. And that combined together is just simplified one over s plus one times s plus three. Okay, I need to calculate the length and also the angle. So let's first do the phase or the angle of the loop gain at s1. So let me so first make a drawing. Drawing on the right side will uh, clarify the situation in more detail. I have the design point s1 here, which has a minus four as a real part and j4 as the imaginary part for as imaginary part. Now the phase contribution from this pole at minus one and a pole at minus three need to be calculated separately. So I have now phi one and phi two. This phase contribution can be calculated by calculating this angle and then do, doing 180 degrees minus this angle. So what I say is the following phi one and then phi 2 together will be uh, shortly alpha, but phi 1 is actually 180 degrees minus the arc tangent of this distance, the height here, divided by this length, which is actually 3. So it is 4 minus 1, which is 3. And then we have the height of 4. So it's actually this expression. So this angle here arc tangent of 4 over 3 is this angle and the 180 degrees minus that angle will give me the phi 1 which is actually 127 and then a similar for for phi 2 will be uh, this angle so i need to subtract this angle from the half circle it will be 180 degrees minus arc tangent of 4 which is the height here minus 4 divided by 4 minus 3 which is shown here it's approximately 104 degrees now alpha was of then is the is the summation of those two angles now we also need to know that the, the fact that the poles are considered as to be negative so alpha has two poles added that means the uh, values for the faces here must be taking negative so we have then together phi 1 and phi 2 will be minus phi 1 and minus phi 2 will be just minus 2, 127 minus 104 for alpha will be minus 231 degrees that's actually for the phase now for the magnitude of the loop again at s1 this is just the uh, expression then for, for the uh, for the loop gain we have now inserted the s1 in it so that is just the uh, substituted value of the s1 and if i now look what is now happening uh, for s1 
what we have here. So this is just S1. If I now substitute S1 here and now simplify this and then determine the length of that one, that will be, of course, the square root of this value. So the square, uh, the, the length of this times the length of that one and one over the two lengths uh, multiplied. So that's actually what you see here. Now, that is done in total, 1 over 5 times the square root of 17. That is for the length. So a combination of the angle and this length, and you substitute in here, you will have this expression for the loop gain. Okay, now we have another necessary uh, elements to carry out the ca further calculations. So let's move on. So next step is to determine the PID controller gains K P, K, I, and K, D. Now, the parameters for the design equations are, we have discussed this uh, shortly, so this is the alpha, which is minus 231 degrees. We have the beta, which is 135 degrees, and we have the S1, magnitude of that one, which is square root of 32, and we have the magnitude of the loop transfer function evaluated as the at the uh, design point S1, which is 1 over 5 times the square root of 17. Now, we know that we have two equations and three are now, so we need to select one of the parameters. So I will just choose for the integral gain k1, ki0.1. You can of course say why is that, uh, is that a good, uh, the best choice and why do we have a specific reason for that one? That will be, uh, of course, depend on your, uh, on your application and maybe also using some uh, experience, you can select a number uh, for this one. It's not a specific reason for this one, so I will just select a 0 0.1. Don't, don't select a too large number or too small number to start with that one. You will see later on if we need to adjust this, what will happen with the other parameters. So let's start with the 0 0.1. Then using the design equation, because since this is known, I can now use the design equation and determine the KP and KD. Design equations for KP, uh, we already know that. Now, I have the alpha, the beta, and the length of the loop transfer function evaluated as one, and also the uh, length of the S1. Now, substituting the values, I have the following expression. Now, do the math here, you will get very close to 29. So, KP is 29. Now, if I look at the KD, this is again the equation for KD. If I now say substitute the values in here, I have then following expression and if i now do the math here you will get very close to four so i have now the proportional control gain derivative controller gain and i have now selected also the integral control gain so the pid controller gain constants are known kp ki and kd are all known so if i now write it down this was the this was the equation for the pid controller this will be then our expression. Now, I can of course alternatively write that in different form. I can say I will write, write down these three terms in one fraction, I have then this expression. And you'll, you'll see that you have one pole and two zeros. That's actually for this case, for the exercise. So we have actually determined now our controller. Now let's verify our calculations using the simulation. That's actually our next step. Now, okay, we have now the unit step response of the closed loop system with a PID controller we have now designed 29 plus 0.1 over S plus 4S. Or you can write in this form so you can have the pole and the zeros directly shown here. Now, this is the unit step response of this system. What you see is the following it has no overshoot, but it is very subtle. So, and the time response is not actually what we wanted. So the setting time is definitely not met. The overshoot is maybe met, but the, the setting time is definitely not met. And of course, the final value will be one. But if you look at the one, it is just here, and I say, and I see that this is just uh, it's already one for final value. That means actually the MATLAB already calculates actually what will happen in the in the final form. And you will maybe need to go all the way to maybe 1 million or, one, uh, or 10 million. 
seconds. So I have just plotted this to up to 100 seconds, but I'm still not at one. So this is very, very slow. You can see that it is a little bit increasing, but it is very slow. So I need to adjust this. It is definitely not the best option. So we can see that this actually in the first, ro first round, this uh, controller must be adjusted. So what can we do? There are many ways to adjust this. So there are also many uh, ways to improve this. So let's look at the next part what I have done. So I adjusted, I have the following. I have actually done the following situation. The expression which you saw here uh, in, the f in the former slide was four times S plus the 7.247 times S plus a very small number for the zero. So if I go back, you can see what it was. It's a very small number, so it's approximately 0 0.0035. What I made, I made this, I changed this in 0 0.5. So I made it cl uh, far away from the vertical axis. And the rest is actually exactly the same. So I have not changed actually the KP, K, uh, KP, KI or KD specifically. I just look at the zero location. So the zero location, it is now 0 0.5. What's happened? Of course, this is now equivalent to that one. You can do the math for yourself. And I have now called this GC of one. So the response is like this. Okay, it is uh, much better. This, uh, it goes faster. And I have a settling time already from, uh, of 1.88 seconds. And I have also an overshoot, which is 4.56%, which is really close to what I, uh, what, what is allowed maximum, but it is still larger than 4.56%. 32% and the setting time is also much larger it's almost two times larger I need at, at, at max one second so I already almost 1.9 seconds so this is also not what I want okay final value is one that is of course fine but it is also not what I want in terms of the overshoot and the setting time so we also need to adjust this one so what can we do now in the second round uh, for the adjustment I've just kept this 0.5 the zero here, I've just uh, made this smaller. So I've placed the zero here, smaller to the vertical axis. So you can see that in the uh, uh, coming slide. So what we see is again, as, as, as summary, over to this much, uh, a little bit larger, but still larger and setting time is way, way larger. It was actually, of course, larger than that one. So it is not good. We need another controller. So we adju with adjusted PID controller, GC of two, I've now made this. So it is now six instead of the uh, seven point something. So it is now a little bit closer than the other zero. So if I now use this controller, I get the following unit step response. What you see is the overhead is 3.66. So 3.7%, lot smaller than the maximum allowed value of 4.32%. And I have a settling time of almost 0 0.59, so 59 seconds, and so almost 0 0.6 seconds. So it is um, definitely smaller than one second. And the final value is just one. So you can also see that if it is one, and my plot will approach that one very shortly. So it is about 33 seconds, or maybe about a couple of seconds, I really reach that uh, value. So it is not really slow. You can improve this, you can make it much, 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 much better. But this is at the moment what I have in this case as a solution. If you want to improve this, you can of course uh, try to change the zero here or maybe the zero there again, or maybe the gain here in front of it. So we can also do that in a different form. What you also see is that the 7.1 here is actually the gain of the derivative control. So that will also uh, it will change uh, the situation. So over to this fine. That is also uh, fine, and the settling time, and all of them uh, are good, uh, less than what I actually uh, require to have maximum. So we continue with the simulation in MATLAB. This is the real-time simulation. We have also discussed also the plots of the simulation, but let's also do this in MATLAB in real time. So what we have is the analytical control design of this PID controller. I define first uh, Laplace parameters, which is just shown here. So S is equal to transfer, and then you make a tr definition of an S, so you, will, you can use that in the transfer functions. This is my plan, GP is one over S plus one times S plus three, which is the plan transfer function. These are the 
controller parameters i have just selected this one for the integral part and this is the derivative gain and this is the proportional controller and this is the initial these are the initial parameters of the pid controller and this is on the pid controller transfer function so this is just the kp plus ki over s plus kd times s we have discussed this in the calculations now you can also rewrite this in a different form we're using uh, just one for uh, one fraction then you see that there is a there are two zeros and one pole at the origin so the one zero at 7.25 approximately and the other one is very is very close to the origin which is 0 0.00345 this is the uh, uh, situation what we have here so if i now run the script so you can do this then you can see that this all will be loaded in this command window now i have also made a closed loop transfer function which is t is equal to feedback and then controller times the plant and then one and then minus one what does that all mean the first entry of this feedback function is actually what you need to have in the feed forward direction which we have also the controller and the plant that's also what we have seen in the feedback we have, we have only unity gain so this is just one this is actually what you have in the feedback loop all the elements and the minus sign emphasize actually that you have a, a negative feedback so if you place uh, one here that will be a positive feedback if you forget this then it is by default negative feedback i have also the already uh, collected the version one and version two of the adjusted uh, pid controllers we have also discussed this so we will see that shortly and also associated feedback parts of that one so we have the closed loop feedback we have the controllers and we have the plant and also define the s parameter so let's run this let's see what's happening so okay it's running you can also check what's uh, what the transfer and then the zero pole and gain model so i can show that we have design which is also given in the zero pole gain model which is shown as you can see this is we have two zeros seven point 247 the other one is very close to the origin and we have one uh, two zeros i mean and we have one pole at the origin now and a t which is also a step of this closed up transfer function for the first try and i will do it and also the grid on directly you can see what's happening this is what we have and this is what we have discussed because if i now look at the plot and i make the limit of this x this a time axis let's, let's say 100 also use that you can see that the label if i go with a label it is approximately 0 0.92 but it will never man it will some s s somehow reach that one but it will it cause a lot of time so if i make this for example let me make this for example 1 million you can see what's happening still 1 million seconds and that's a lot and it is still not one so this is a very 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 slow system at the moment and what we have designed now with this controller is not uh, what we wanted so the settling time is not uh, uh, achieved here so the specification of settling time is definitely not met so let's then look at the step response of this adjusted pid controller so we have changed only the the small zero into 0 0.5 so if i now make this step again for the t1 because that's the close-up system then you can see that the characteristics are much better so we have some settling time which is 1.88 seconds we have discussed this and we see that the so i make it a little bit larger you see that the overshoot is approximately 4.5 it's, it's a little bit larger than what is actually allowed so and the rise time is not really interesting for the rise time because that's not actually what we want but and the final value is one now if i now go for example here and i label just uh, just a value on the plot here you can see it is coming closer to one so this will definitely approach one in a very short time so this is okay in terms of speed but in terms of settling time it is still not what we wanted so we actually we needed here one second and also the overshoot is also a little bit larger than allowed so we need to also adjust this now what i did to make this uh, a little bit also graphical i used the app of the matlab so i can use the control system designer i can then load actually this controller in it 
and I can then or this controller in it doesn't matter and I can then adjust the controller by adjusting the zero or I can make just the uh, final uh, control I have here selected so you can then see what's actually happening so let's do that so I will now collect this one and then you will have the following uh, picture so this is actually what you have so this is a very nice uh, editor you have the architecture you can choose from you have the you have different uh, different uh, configuration for your controller so this is actually what we also have so this is the pre-filter which is in this in our case just one this is the controller this is the plan and this is the sometimes it's called the sensor but it's in, this, in our case one so if i now type in here just one and also for the unity game feedback for the sensor also one and for the g it is of course for So we have the G of P. So we this. G. So what you have is you can now select here the uh, the the controller. So I can now upload the controller here. Or oh, is it unrecognized? So let me get rid of this one. So let me upload that. Import this. So we have the controller and the plant. So I will import the plant. I will here. You can also type in G of C. That's also possible, so you don't have to import directly. This is one, of course, we have already said it's also one. Just And I can now see that this is running and it will update actually your system. So you can see that there's a root locus plot. You can see the location of the poles and the zeros and that's actually what you have for your system. And it is exactly the same plot as we have before. Now, if I now change the architecture, I mean the controller, I can say now I want the controller GC of one and I can now again do OK and it will update again and you can see that this is actually what we have. Now what you can do is very nice here so you can I can just select here the overshoot and also the settling time. This is very interesting. Let me see that. I can now move with this. I can now move with this. Let me yeah. I can now move with this uh, pole, that these are the close to poles, and you can see what's happening actually with your settling time. So it will change, the settling time will change, also the overshoot will change. So it is this overshoot is now 6.5 approximately, and this one is 1.2. It's not uh, still not within the specification, but this is very nice. So I can I see that this is now 6.5 eight maybe nine and this is then 0 0.59 approximately so you can see that this is actually very really nice so you can see okay this is maybe a very uh, nice solution but the overshoot is uh, too large so we need to also solve this problem so you can say okay maybe i can just move on and try to find this uh, maybe a better solution with this one this is actually adjusting using a MATLAB uh, uh, root locus tool. So you can see what's happening. So I can see that this is actually not really helping. If I go the other way around, you can see that the overshoot will decrease somehow, but also the setting time will increase. So this is not really a uh, solution for this problem. So that's actually what I then figured out to say, okay, let's then make the controller with a different, two different zeros. So the what we have the KGC1, which is now formed, so I will change it to zero pole gain configuration. Now I will now upload this one in this, this one in, in here, and I will then maybe adjust this four. That's actually what we want. So let's look at it and just import this. This is actually what we have now. Now I can now run. The other other parameters are exact same. It's running. It's now updating. I can see that the overshoot is much 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 smaller, but the static time is still uh, too too uh, too uh, too large. So I can now start uh, adjusting this one. So it is now two a little bit lot lo okay a little smaller. I can see that the setting time is 1.4 approximately. Still not what we wanted. So it is now okay. It is now okay. okay. 
look at it. We have something. It's 3.8 approximately and 0 0.58 approximately. So this is one of the possible options. So if you say, okay, I'm, uh, I'm uh, happy with this one, then you can stop here and you can then export your controller. Or you can say, I want to make it even better. Then you can try to make the overshoot even lower, but you can see that the overshoot is now increasing. And setting time is a little bit decreasing. You can also go all the way, all the way to the edge of the set, uh, overshoot, and try to make this as small as possible. That's actually what your uh, depends on your uh, your design. So if I keep it like this, for example, if I say, okay, I am uh, happy with this one, four four percent overshoot, and on zero point fifty five, for example, uh, uh, for my setting time and the steady state value is definitely one so you can see that now i want to know what kind of control i have now designed using this root locus tool so i can now use export and i can then export the controller which is the c in that block so i can now uh, export the c now i can do that and then export it will now export it uh, let me see that no, okay and I can now type in C because that's actually what it is. And this is actually the controller. What you can see is it is S plus six and S times X plus five for our original zeros and also the uh, pole at origin. But this four is, has now changed to 8.3 approximately. I had in the editor in my uh, script was 7.1. So I had a different overshoot specification and also the different uh, setting time, the performance of this uh, close-up system. But this is the close-up system with this uh, with this controller so if i now look at this one i can also use this controller and make it maybe even better or depending on what what your uh, specifications are but this is a, a one way of adjusting your controller by using the nice uh, root locus editor of the mat of matlab so i advise you to do this First, of course, uh, do the calculations and also uh, look what you will get in a rough sense because what we do uh, with that dominant pole approximation is we assume that the system can be modeled by only two poles and that's of course uh, an approximation. It can be also a very crude approximation and you will see if you have a very high overshoot and you expect it, for example, 5% but you get 25% then you can uh, see what you can do to adjust that. Of course, you have to uh, judge the uh, changes or the steps you take, and that will be, of course, important when you, uh, when you follow the uh, steps in your analysis. And that is very important and when you feel that you uh, have changed something and it is also, uh, you can also prove it, then it is also uh, uh, understandable for later on why you have done this. So if you just work out, of course, here the numbers and you will maybe just work out for one day and you will find maybe one of the best controllers where well, you will never reproduce that and that is actually not the uh, way to go. I hope this clarifies this uh, situation in more detail. Uh, this is a very extended uh, problem where we have the calculations and simulations and also in this form, also the simulation regal form. Thank you very much for your attention. I will try to upload another video also in different topics in electronics and in math and other uh, topics which is really interesting for, uh, for engineering and science. Thank you very much for your attention again and see you next time and don't forget to like and share this video so that we can reach more people. Have a nice day and take care.